So, so uh, welcome to our talk. Um, and um, yeah, please, next slide. The title already was given. So short uh, overview. Uh, we start with an introduction and motivation. Uh, just remember you about what MacLib is uh, and um, some words on the state of development and uh, some recent development made by Aaron is the animation interactivity of sketches and uh, then uh, summary and acknowledgements. Next slide, please. So short uh, introduction of us. Um, I am teaching at uh, University of Applied Sciences in Brandenburg uh, for more than 10 years now. Um, and I teach undergraduate, postgraduate courses, mainly in engineering mechanics. And that is the field where I am using um, a lot of uh, asynchronous e-learning resources, which uh, these activities in JSX Graph and Stack are about. Next slide, please. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I'll be introducing myself. So my full name is Aaron Amran bin Amiruddin. I'm a Malaysian student and I received a scholarship from, my, from the Malaysian government to study engineering in Germany. Um, I'm currently taking masters in energy efficiency in technical systems at the Teha Brandenburg. And I've also completed my bachelor's in electronics and IT, also at the same uni. Currently, I'm, I am writing the master's thesis in, uh, titled Further Development of a JavaScript Library for Interactive Moodle Exercises in Engineering and uh, Exercises. So next slide. Yeah, OK. So the motivation for e-learning materials and engineering mechanics was uh, the heterogeneous uh, students' uh, knowledge. And uh, so, so we need some uh, training uh, tools or a sort of virtual gym for uh, math and mechanics. and. Uh, which could be used outside classroom in an asynchronous way, but with self-paced learning uh, speed and, and instant feedback, which is very important. And um, so that's a formative assessment and also for automatic grading of, of homework. And the technology base that we have in uh, our university is the Moodle learning management system. And uh, you have the, the question type stack available and our uh, admins, uh, they uh, support that. Next slide, please. So the specific uh, thing in uh, our um, e-learning tools is that we need support for graphical input because a lot of skills in, in engineering is uh, modeling, making mechanical models and, and sketching them. Uh, we have graphoanalytical methods uh, which need some performance on, on pencil and paper uh, in a graphical way. And also the visualization like diagrams and things like that uh, is uh, an issue to uh, develop skills with. Next. So um, we've already implemented uh, tasks where we can do quite complex things. So uh, for curve sketching, we have interactive spline objects in a library of um, JavaScript objects. And um, this is modification of existing objects, but we go beyond of that. And we even have an interactive uh, editing tool for uh, making uh, free body diagrams. That are sketches where you have to deactivate parts of the environment of a system and uh, add um, and replace that by forces and moments. And um, a an particular challenge, but that is outside of JSX Graph, is to provide detailed feedback on that. So we will focus on, on the uh, graphic part of, of these things for now. Next slide, please. So uh, the interface between JSX Graph and Stack was already discussed uh, yesterday. And um, the what we uh, make use of is the um, the, the custom uh, binding. And uh, that means that we use an input field in a stack, which essentially is a field in the HTML DOM object, digital object model, uh, uh, and doc uh, document object model. I don't know what the abbreviation exactly is. 
But, um, and these uh, fields are shared between uh, stack and uh, JavaScript. And there's Xgraph. And uh, the data structure inside these fields uh, represents our sketches. And uh, this is the uh, is the, the yellow highlight here. And then we also can uh, just use text injection. So uh, static objects for initialization, for instance, can uh, be uh, brought to JavaScript. Next slide, please. Uh, the standard way to do stack questions with JavaScript um, or JSX graph uh, applets is to um, specify some variables inside the stack question in the so-called question variables region, and then in the question text to embed a JSX graph block with problem-specific JavaScript code. For instance, there is an applet for uh, positioning a circle and a line in the coordinate system that um, is realized by this blue uh, uh, boxed uh, JavaScript code. So for whatever thing you um, have to implement, you need to find a solution. And uh, these solutions need to be consistent between uh, several tasks uh, or questions. And they need to be maintained and adjusted to new versions of JavaScript, uh, JSX graph, and uh, Moodle. So next slide, please. Uh, so what we do is we try to uh, you create the same sketch using a, a list of objects um, on uh, the, in the question variables. So we, we define uh, a maximal list uh, of uh, object specifications. There's a keyword, name of the object, and some parameters, which are object specific, of course. And this is conveyed to JSX graph, and the uh, actual applet is then generated from this list and the code to be inserted in the question is entirely gene generic. So you do not need to touch any JavaScript when you uh, author such a question. You just need to know the objects. There's a nice wiki page on that. Uh, so you uh, can uh, do that and uh, do not need to think anything about JavaScript. So that was the idea of creating this object library and uh, with recent uh, stack versions, you even can um, put in a link to an external library, which you may then uh, update uh, online. And uh, so, so you, for instance, can do the transition between uh, new Moodle and stack versions uh, without touching all your questions. But still, there can be a lot of um, changes in the JavaScript code under the hood, which you otherwise would have to do in every question separately. So that's the idea why we have this uh, external library maglib. Next slide, please. So uh, to summarize and uh, to, to add uh, some information, so we um, have also, um, besides the JavaScript uh, classes uh, for the objects, we have some uh, feedback functions in uh, Maxima uh, also be, being part of that uh, library. And we found um, initially it was meant uh, to enable us to uh, handle interactive input in questions from students. But we already use that for by production of whatever sketches in our um, questions, uh, be it dynamic or static or interactive or not. So uh, it is very consistent uh, in the appearance and it is also uh, self-contained. So the sketches are part of the stack questions and they can be edited using the question variables, the list of objects. Next slide, please. Here's an overview on um, what objects uh, are defined. So that's uh, um, step which has stabilized in the last year. Um, so we find it quite uh, sufficient at the moment. And um, what you see here is the, the uh, red dots. These are control points. Objects with such control points are interactive and all the other objects, they uh, have been static so far 
until uh, Aaron came into the uh, play and uh, started his thesis. Um, so some of the objects were interactive, but most were not. So you could not move them around. And uh, next slide, please. Uh, this is a, a question example, which I already mentioned, and uh, everything you have to define is just this set of, uh, this list of lists, uh, object descriptions. Next slide, please. This is just a bit of show, showing off some of these interactive sketches um, where uh, you see uh, how the complexity of the sketch relates with uh, the um, amount of um, objects you have to specify. And uh, one point, for instance, is that uh, here we define the label position uh, in the object label in the uh, lines with starting with label. Uh, we explicitly set these uh, positions um, yeah, because automatic labeling would not work at that point. So next slide, please. This is our um, body diagram editor. You can put in the name and then drag and drop the gray force or moment objects and um, then adjust their positions and you get uh, feedback on whether the position is correct, whether the direction is correct, whether the naming is correct or appropriate. And, uh, but the, I've presented that earlier. So uh, next slide, please. The um, yeah the current work uh, focuses on uh, maintenance. So uh, we, we've uh, handled the transition to uh, Stack for four with uh, much support uh, from uh, Mati Hariula, um, and uh, which uh, led to a solution in this transition, which allowed us to keep all the questions untouched, just modify the library. And um, that was a big uh, success for me because otherwise it would have cost me uh, quite some, nah, I think more than weeks of work. Uh, uh, there are several hundred questions now for the three courses of engineering mechanics. And uh, in the extensions, uh, I done quite some work in uh, feedback functions and what, uh, Aaron's thesis is about to add interactivity and animations to objects so uh, that you can move the sketches around and not just editable objects as uh, it was until now. And um, I think now it's uh, your part, Aaron. Next slide, please. Yeah. Okay. So thank you, Professor Kraska. So now I'll be explaining about the first sample question that, I, that, we, have, that we have decided to show. So the first part, uh, this question is, it shows a simple pulley system with mass A and mass B. And this question, it is meant, it is meant in such a way that only mass B is interactive as denoted by the control points here. What this means is that when mass B is moved upwards, then mass B and the corresponding pulley, they will, also, they will move downwards. And the same thing will also happen vice versa. If mass B is pulled downwards, then mass A and the pulley system, it will also move upwards. Now, I would like to show the, the JS fiddle. The, oh, it does not open. I guess I have to open it from here. Uh, okay. Okay, yes. So as we can see over here, um, this is how we create the questions to be interactive. We need to yeah, we need to code with uh, extra JavaScript codes. Yeah, it's done at the bottom here. So in this case, as I've said, when the user clicks on the mouse and drags the object upwards, this uh, the corresponding mass A would move downwards. And when the mouse click is released, then the object will return to the initial position because of the balance of forces. So how did I approach this? Firstly, I need to understand that, that, that I do not want the objects to move anyhow. So first I have to create uh, the line elements, the straight line elements. And instead of using the normal point uh, object, I use the glider object, which lives on the line element. And another thing is that I do not want the students to move this must be beyond this area 
because because uh, that would not make any sense uh, in the in the realistic police situation. So in this case, I limit the the length of the of the line at this point to the top part. The main challenge that I face when when recreating this question was to ensure that the speed of both objects move at the at the uniform rate. If you realize, like when I move the mass B, it moves uh, it moves like noticeably faster than the objects on the left side here. And another challenge was that um, it was to decide the scaling factor, which would then affect the speed of the objects moving. So now I would like to return to the slides. Yes. Now moving on to the second question. In this question, we have uh, what we have here is a beam, which is attached to the fixed object, and a spring, which is attached to the section of the beam, which is also attached to the fixed object. In this case, when the user, when they, con uh, uh, when they try to oscillate the beam object by controlling the, the control points over here, and, and when they drag the object upwards or downwards, and when they release the mouse, uh, it is expected for the objects to oscillate at a certain uh, amplitude. Now I would like to show the JS uh, to show the demonstration in JS Fiddle with the corresponding object frames. So this is just a quick demonstration. You can see that the object is now undergoing some sort of swinging. So initially, I thought that I will only need to use one, one circle to ensure that the object it moves uniformly. But then it turns out that I also need another circle object to ensure that the changes in the degree, it's, it is proportional on both circles. Another thing um, which, was, which was a bit difficult to replicate um, is the oscillation uh, part. Is this because um, I've noticed that, that in JSS graph example, they use the uh, the the Runga-Kuta method, and personally, I am not familiar with with that with that mathematical method. So I decided to to try to simulate it as much as possible by using the move along method here. But then I would firstly uh, need to create the the arrays of the path, and path C one it refers to the smaller circle, and C two which means circle two refers to the larger circle. So then I have to calculate the scaling factor and ensure that, uh, that the amplitude it undergoes some sort of damp damping as in trying to simulate how, how the real swinging works. And another, another um, trick that I use is to, is, to put, is to alternate between the negative and positive values. So in this case, let's say if I were to start um, be below the y-axis, which means that the value is currently negative. And when I release the next value, it, since it is negative uh, in the second element, it will then be, be positive. And the same thing repeats until the, until the whole ob object comes to a stop. Now, returning to the slides, uh, the third uh, sample question is, is a milling machine where, where, we, where in this case, we have the circle and the and the direction of the of the velocity and the perpendicular force. Um, the intention of this question is is so that when the users when they move the slides, uh, sorry, not the slides, when they move the slider object from left to right or from right to left, the object it also move correspondingly. And here is the code on how on how we did it. Like um, first we have to. Uh, and since uh, this this question like it requires the use of the maximal variables, this is where we we directly also make use of the angles of the object at each point. We we make use of the sinus and the cosinus of the object, and we and we just extract the arrays from the question variables. Now I like to demonstrate how it works. Okay, so if I move it to the right slider, it will, it will keep moving forward. 
However, um, the problem right now is that um, the slider feature is that uh, is that if I move it to the left, it is it is expected for the velocity to to actually be opposite, and currently, yeah, we are still trying to figure that out. So that is one of the challenges faced uh, in this question. Now, um, as stated earlier, to enable the question in Moodle to be interactive, the the creator of the questions they now need to have to have some knowledge of JavaScript in order to combine the objects together and to ensure that the entire system moves uniformly. And this can and, and this is done in MacLib by firstly, for example, if you want to create the interactive questions. We have to firstly in, firstly initialize the main objects, um, which in which in this case are the question variables. Um, it, uh, in Moodle we do it as a stack variable, but then uh, if in JS Fiddle we just we just put it in the HTML section. Then here we initialize the main, the main objects, and at the code section we create shortcuts by assigning the objects and their array positions into into new variables. From this. We then create the interactive control points or sliders depending on our needs. And finally, if we want this, if we want the specific objects to be interactive, we then create the callback functions or mouse events, and then we and then we specify um, how would be how would the behavior of the mouse be like when the users click on it. Now, um, I would like to explain uh, from my experience of of programming. Uh, of uh, of trying to develop MacLib, and my experience of using JSX Graph. So from my experience, uh, I came to realize that there are uh, two kinds of uh, of geometrical elements, and 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 this is not explicitly stated in JSX Graph, but I came to realize that like firstly there are the point based objects where we can simply directly apply the fix equals to false uh, attributes and the move to method to the points. To to simply uh, move the point from one point to, and to another. However, the problem arises for the curve based object where we, where we uh yeah where where the move to method it just doesn't apply directly, because the curve from my from my understanding of a curve it is it is from a function so it's meant to be dynamic. And the second thing I came to realize was that um, as as previously stated by Professor Kraska, the objects in MATLAB they are mostly static. And the and the workaround that I found for this was to replace the static variables um, using error functions. And uh, for those of you who do not know what error functions are, error functions are simply um, a shorthanded method of the normal function in JavaScript. And lastly, it is to apply the the available JSS graph transformations or regroup the objects um, if we need. Now I will show the some example of objects that have already been developed. Oh, I think it. Okay. So yeah, um, over here, as we can see, in the HTML section, we have already initialized the corresponding objects. For example, here we have the dashboard, we have the circle with rope attached. We have the fixed objects, we have the polygon, we have the compressive uh, spring, we have, and we have the tensile spring. So in this case over here, I've, all, I've, also already, uh, I've also already assigned the control points to each of the corresponding objects. So right now, the objects are all successfully movable. And yeah, and the questions will, will also then be interactive depending on, on how the users create the questions. Now, I'll be explaining um, for, for the major objects uh, that they, they require a lot of, the, uh, of, of code modifications. So the first object I would like to explain is about the fixed objects. And- um, Aaron, I think uh, we can't yeah. go into the details. Yeah. Uh, just uh, give an impression. I would okay. not- Go into the code, I think, oh. except that uh, people ask uh, afterwards. Okay, sure, sure. Just show uh, what you did. Okay. So basically, what I did for the fixed object was, um, I got the idea from one of the example website on in from the JSS graph, 
and the idea basically it is to calculate the the difference between a reference point and we apply that difference as a transformation of type translate to the rest of the points and what this will cause it uh, it will cause the entire shape of the object to remain constant now next one is in this case of the dimension object the main challenge was to make the lower pair of the points at the control points and to maintain the 90 degree angles. So um, what I did was to I make use of the circles uh, and the lines and the corresponding intersections. And from the intersection points, yeah, um, after I have already hide the visibility of the, of the unneeded uh, elements, the final output is that the objects are now uh, interactive. The third part is the rope object, where basically it is it's supposed to be a rope which is attached to two circle objects, and uh, this can be and this is seen for example in the very first sample question where we make use of the rope and the circle in the pulley system. The idea behind it is that um, we just have to make use of the circles and and the and some geometrical intersections as well. Now, moving on to the curve-based objects. In this case of Maglip, it will be the dashpot object, this first one, the compression spring, and the tensile spring. So, one of the main challenges that I faced was that um, in the case of the tensile spring, as the length in increases, the terminal lines, which are the two lines at the end of the spring, it, it will also increase. Then I realized that to solve this issue, I had to apply the proper scaling factor to it. The next one would be the beam object. Yeah, this is uh, quite quite complicated, but in but in overall, the way how I solve it, it was to make sure that the that the that the creation of the variables needed for each point of the beam object it is dynamic. The JavaScript concept that I use for this is template literals. And I also use um, the, the objects, and that, sorry, and also use the concepts such as the immediately invoked function expression in JavaScript. And now moving on to the conclusion of, of the lessons that I've learned from trying to animate and make the objects interactive in Maglib. The first step is definitely to spend some time to understand the JSS graph documentation and the available examples. And definitely we should also use the, the available animation methods. And also when it comes to transformation, having reference points is, is crucial. When we want to make the object dynamics, we have to make use of functions. And in the case of maintaining the angles, um, we have to use object intersections and we have to assign the point to that new coordinates. And lastly, when we want to create the interactive questions in Moodle, um, it is. It's also. Um, yeah. It's also important to know that that the length of the of the additional JavaScript code it will then increase um, in proportional with the degree of interactivity needed. So yeah. Now we have almost reached the end. Now here now I'll like to uh, explain about the summary and outlook. So Maglib is a JavaScript library which is made to avoid repeated JavaScript coding when authoring stack questions with JSS graph elements. And the focus of Maglib, as we have seen, it is for the use in undergraduate engineering mechanics. The advanced features of Maglib is that, for example, it's curve editing or free body diagram editing if they are supported. And further development focuses on testing by students and streamlined functions for automatic feedback. Yeah, so now here, is, here are the acknowledgements. The Department of Engineering at the at Teha Brandenburg, which, are, which has been um, done by student assistants, Moodle and Stack teams, and Mati Harila for the Stack Test Environment and Stack Coaching, uh, and Anti Rasila for the curating of the Abacus database, and of course, um, Professor Alfred Vasupan for providing the JSS Graph Library and the related MacLib bug features uh, bug fixes and features so yeah now we have come to the end of our presentation of the recent developments of maglips 
and how and how there is a big change in terms of the object interactivity. So I would like to thank you for your attention. Yeah, we are open to uh, questions. And there's also a backup slide on the issue discussed yesterday. If yes, you want to start with that, there was uh, the uh, question of how to control the info box uh, and uh, in particular, how to make this control, um, let's say, uh, unisotropic. <laughs> so different between the X and Y axis. And um, so that is something um, which, of course, I didn't uh, think about myself. That uh, was, uh, I, I guess, a hint uh, some time ago by Alfred. And uh, so, so uh, what we do is we um, replace the uh, info box function, which is shown once an object is highlighted, uh, with our own function. And this function takes the coordinates x and y, and uh, the uh, a link uh, to the element, a reference to the element uh, which that uh, point belongs to. And uh, so uh, what we actually do is we uh, compute the text to show. And um, that is uh, controlled by a label that can be set. Uh, and, and these settings, they these are just attached properties, attributes of the reference object. So if we want to uh, modify the info box, then we just put an attribute to the element. And uh, if that attribute is available, then uh, it will be uh, considered. And if not, then defaults are taken. And um, this uh, um, affects, we, we can scale the uh, value. So, so our grid has always the, the generic uh, with one and by one in X and Y, but the displayed values on the axis and also in the info box, they can be controlled by these properties. This is the scale factor, X scale, Y scale, and the decimal precision in X direction and Y direction. And um, most objects have uh, reasonable defaults for that. But uh, in case you uh, feel uh, the need for it, you can uh, overwrite this um, without using uh, JavaScript just by specifying appropriate object properties in, in the maxima uh, variable. So, so that's um, how it looks like internally and externally. It just looks like that you affect the decimal precision, so the, the, uh, the decimal um, the point, the, the, the figures after the, the decimal point to the right of the decimal point, and also uh, the scaling, um, the, the grid unit, so to say, the displayed one. So, so that's it, how we do it. And you do not uh, have to implement that in each question because it is just part of MacLib. And if you include MacLib in your question, then you have this uh, at your uh, command. <laughs>